Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Shirley, and this is Colin. Um, and today I want to interview Colin um, for his work on a uh, software called Next Train. Um, and actually, I don't know if you can tell, I'm like kind of really nervous because <laughs> it's been so long since I streamed. So if you want to take over and introduce yourself, I'd be like super grateful, Colin. <laughs> I it, my my uh, my my nervousness might be higher. My my last uh, um, my last official high school biology uh, my last official class in biology was at fourteen in high school. So you know I, I uh, am presenting on a topic which is technical, but I you know I, I will reinforce at the outset I am not an epidemiologist. So I'm um, on the development side. Uh, so I'm Colin. I build uh, interactive data exploration tools for the uh, for the web. Really passionate about data visualization. Um, really passionate about helping scientists uh, share and, um, uh, and and empower people who don't program to uh, explore high dimensional spaces. Um, you know, uh, uh, expression gene expression spaces, um, and uh, and we can get into that. We can get into that soon. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank uh, Colin so much. And actually, so I'll also be kind of keeping an eye out on um, the chat. So the weird thing I like, there's some weird video thing going on for me. So I'll be like looking back and forth. Okay. When I'm over here, I'm looking at Colin. When I'm over here, um, I'm looking at the chat. Um, but yeah, I'll be monitoring the chat. Um, and today, Colin has really awesomely volunteered to answer a lot of my questions about NextTrain, which is um, the visualization tool um, that we'll be covering. And then um, so that uh, because because I as also someone that hasn't really taken a biology class since I was like 15 <laughs> um, can understand everything that um, it's showing us. And also, um, because there's been a lot of interest from developers to help with um, uh, with the tool, with um, uh, like open issues on the tool, um, uh, we will also be covering potential like onboarding for it. Um, yes. Yeah, and then um, Hydroskull in the chat has really nicely actually helped us um, link to all of the open issues on Next Train. Um, Amazing. If people want to check that out, um, and I'll try and link that um, in. This will go on YouTube later on, and I'll try and link all of these um, in the in YouTube description as well. So yeah. So do you want to get started um, and share your screen and um, teach us uh, all of the biology? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so broadly today, I'll start sharing. Is that all right? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, so let's see. And can you see that window? Yeah. All right. So broadly today, uh, we're going to be talking about an area of biology called phylogenetics. Uh, and the the general idea, you know, is a, is a uh, family tree. Everyone knows... Um, Everyone kind of knows that concept, and uh, family tree for organisms, though, um, you know, kind of goes back to the, the root of um, the, the root of all life, and we're really looking at you know kind of a section of that tree, right? We're looking at viruses, and we're looking at then maybe just one species in that uh, in that tree, and so um, drawing trees to describe uh, how um, you know. Uh, how organisms are related to each other goes back um, goes back quite a ways, and um, uh, but in this case, it's um, uh, in this case we're going to be looking at visualizations um, that are uh, are just of one organism. So each uh, each we're, we we may be looking at multiple organisms. We'll look at um, coronavirus, uh, which mm -hmm. you can see a map of here, and we'll explain that. We'll also be looking at flu and Ebola uh, from the twenty fifteen um, the twenty fifteen Ebola outbreak. And we'll be describing uh, some of the ways which we can visualize those um, uh, those um, those outbreaks and uh, and some of um, uh, oh, in the case of Ebola an outbreak in the case of flu an endemic um, an endemic virus and then in the case of coronavirus an ongoing pandemic uh, and we'll talk about some of the vocabulary around uh, around epidemics and pandemics and mm -hmm. um, uh, and then uh, uh, and I will leave. Um, 
hopefully uh, I'll cover the basics that it took. Uh, I kind of had to get some of the basics uh, over the two years that I worked with scientists at Fred Hutchinson Cancer to, um, uh, to, to help them bring about a platform. Um, and I'll say a little bit about my involvement there um, mm -hmm. to, just to clarify that. You know, the credit for uh, for all of this work scientifically um, would go to the labs of uh, Trevor Bedford and um, uh, and uh, uh, who's in Seattle, and uh, to uh, Richard Nair, who's in, uh, who's in Switzerland. Um, the uh, Richard is a computational physicist who works in biology, uh, and uh, and uh, Trevor is a computational biologist. And computational biology as a field it kind of says, you know, right, we have a huge amount of data. We'll look at some of that data directly and we want to use computers to make meaning of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, you know, broadly, um, you might, when you think of a biologist, you might think of someone who's, um, you know, who's kind of in a, in a lab uh, uh, with a test tube. Um, and, and while that, you know, that, that is a part of this pipeline, mm -hmm. the computational bits are saying, well, we've got, you know, huge amounts of data, gigabytes of data, uh, terabytes of data have, that have come off of, um, of the machines, that are uh, genetic sequencing machines, and now we need to make meaning of that data. And that's where, you know, things like machine learning um, become, become, become you, and, other, and just algorithms in general, statistical methods um, more broadly become, become useful for making meaning. Mm -hmm.